So it went down Friday night, Dodger Stadium. Tons of controversy as Major League Baseball franchise, the Los Angeles Dodgers, hosting their Pride Night event. And a couple of things. I'm a lifelong Dodger fan. I'm not going to say how long. I mean, I used to watch Dodger games as a child with my grandfather. And let's just say I remember the famous uh, Kirk Gibson. I remember the home run. Okay. So anyway, that's how far me and the Dodgers go back. All right. And for the better part of my life, I was also a Catholic, race Catholic. There was also a time where I said Eastern philosophies are the key to a good life. Anyway, present day today, I'm a follower of Lord Jesus Christ. So long story short, I've been around the block. I've taken different streets in the city, you know, if you get me, all right? So anyway, let's go ahead and get this started. Guys, there's two things that I'll ask at the end. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. I'm going to save those to the very, very end. So let's look at this first clip here, uh, local news station, um, KCAL 9. Pride and defending faith. Weeks of controversy came to a head tonight at Dodgers Pride Night. Thousands showed support at the game and a massive crowd protested outside. This was over the team. Before I go too far in that, I like how the KCBS uh, KCAL anchor says, you know, a thousand show up for support. OK, remember this in the future, as this would lead you to believe that, like she said, thousands showed up to support. OK, and they kind of lead you. All right. So anyway, let's go to this second clip here. <clears throat> So the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence were invited and honored on the field Friday night as heroes as part of the Pride Night celebration at Dodger Stadium. So what's all the hype about? What's the controversy over the sisters? So if you don't know who they are, let's take a look. This is one of their uh, their events here. <laughs> I'm going to pause that really quick because it's hard to watch, but please hit like and subscribe really quick. I'm going to jump back to the video. So what do you think about that? It's pretty wild, right? And the funny thing is that most Christians are so tolerant that they don't say anything. You got this man simulating a, a pole dance on Christ. But anyway, let's take a look at this third clip here. <clears throat> Big shout out to uh, Black and White Sports for this clip. Yeah, they're booing now. Our next guest is the only openly gay major league baseball player, current or former, alive today. Wow, take a look at that. That crowded house at Dodger Stadium. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the opposing side. Protesters here. Go and send some more. They're mocking. There is a lot of protesters there. Now that literally looks like a thousand, you know, thousands of people that showed up to protest and I didn't hear of any arrests or anything like that. So I'm assuming it went pretty peacefully. Um, guys, so there's tons of different directions I can go with this video, but I want to stay focused on a couple of things. So first of all, I'm focused on uh, for myself, uh, my faith and my family. OK, I am a believer, like I said, a follower of Jesus Christ. I am a dad and a head of household. That being said, I'm going to I'm going to stick to three points as a believer that I took away uh, from the system thoughts. All right. First of all, you know, we're called to be like Christ love what he loves, hate what he hates. Guys, Jesus loves a person, but hates my sin. Okay. Um, it said, there's a Bible verse, uh, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. 
And by this, we all know that you are my disciples if you have a love for one another, right? So when I hit rock bottom, I cried out to God to get me out of my situation. Uh, I repented and asked for forgiveness. And I want to underline repent, okay? I repented and asked for forgiveness. And I never went back to that area, that, that sin in my life, right? So God forgives you if you repent, um, you know, sin no more, you know, go and sin no more. That means whatever he saved you from, uh, turn your back from it and don't go back, right? Um, number two, you know, other thought is, you know, be hot. What does that mean? You know, be hot for, for, for Christ. So there's a Bible verse that says, uh, so then because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Right. There's different verses that say, I will spit you out of my mouth. And that's actually Revelation 316. And I think of that and it's a pretty powerful verse. But here's kind of backstory for myself with it is that being hot for God, what does that mean? So I had taken a, a trip with my daughter uh, last fall. We spent a good hours, six hours driving on the road. Right. So it's a lot of time together on the road, you know, bonding and all the way there. We just talked about God, you know, um, she had made, she had made the comment that dad, that's so crazy. And I'm like, what, you know, you know, all this time, we just talked about God in our life, the role in our life, what he has done for us. Um, you know, what he did, you know, we shared Bible stories, you know, past what, again, what he's done for us in the past, what he's doing for us right now, Bible stories, Bible verses, and so we were hot for God, you know, and I, I just I'm still tripped out by that to this day that we spent that much time together, um, you know, talking and, you know, loving on the Lord. We were, we were listening to worship music all along the way. Um, anyway, third point I'm, I'm making in this is that we are, we as believers know Christ is coming back. Right. And. First off, he's not coming to point the finger at everybody out here in the audience. He's not coming back to point the finger at everybody, first off, right? Um, you know, he's coming back for the church. So that means the, the church, his people first are going to go through this, right? This means um, to me that he's going to make sure his house is clean first, right? His people are clean, following his word, you know, being examples of, of love, right? And not sinning. Um, then he will deal with the world. So he's going to deal with us first, the body of Christ first, uh, the church, um, church body first, then with everyone else. And like any good father, you know, God gave us an example, an example for us, you know, like any mom or dad, you make sure your house is in order first before you go giving advice, right? Nobody likes that where you give advice first and your house is a mess, right? Your house is not in order. Uh, disregard what's going on in the background, guys. But anyway, <laughs> but um, so Christ wants us first to get right, you know, get our hearts right, you know, for the Lord. So I'm going to circle back now. Oh, I hate that circle back thing, but I'm going to go back to now two questions I have. Right. So my first question, I do have a question for believers, right? Ones who call ourselves maybe newborn Christians, you know, whatever storm God pulled you through, whatever God is working in your life right now your children's life, whatever he's done for you in the past or in the present or what he is, or the promise he's going to do for you in the future. Let me ask you, why are you not hot? Why are you not hot for God? Right. Expressing it, you know, in love and your passion, you know, talking about it. Why are you not hot for God? You know, comment below where you're at in, in your life right now with that. And that was for, you know, believers. And I do have a question for now for non-believers, right? So first off, there is no Bible verse for me as a Christian that says, I should go out and openly mock what you believe in, right? To clarify, it doesn't say for, but let's see, let me go back. Let me take that back. To clarify, however, it does say for me to test the spirit, right? If what you're saying is holds true to my, to the Bible, right? This is the whole truth of the Bible, testing the spirit, right? But again, it doesn't say for, for me to go openly and mock you and what you believe. So back to my question, why? Why, when you do mock, do you only choose to mock Jesus? I mean, if you're not religious and religion is false, right? Religion is false under that pretense. We're talking all religion is false. Why aren't you also mocking Muhammad, Buddha? Why are you just choosing to mock Jesus Christ? Anyway, guys, 
Go ahead and leave your comments below. Have a great day.